I want to talk about uh, ridiculously huge numbers. This came out of a couple of sources. One more recently is some conversations I was having with my young son um, who thought really huge numbers were really cool. And secondly, that that reminded me when I was a kid and I thought really, really huge numbers were really, really cool. Um, and so I want to tell you uh, this story, and it, it's going to be mainly just for fun, but it actually has um, it actually has connections to very, very deep facts about mathematics. So let's think about some big numbers we could write down. Well, we could write down just one followed by many, many zeros. You don't have to know that much about numbers to uh, write that kind of thing down. OK, well, that's already really, really, really big. Um, this is bigger than most people would usually need, but eh, this number is n not actually even as many atoms are, as are in your body, for example. Certainly not as many particles are in the universe. Well, we could keep adding zeros and repeat that process for as long as we wanted, and we could get a really, really big number. But it's getting pretty cumbersome. And anytime we say this, oh, let's repeat it for a long time, we might want to think, is there a more efficient way to do this? And of course there is. This guy, of course, is 10 to the, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh, so 13 groups of 3, 10 to the 39th. Okay. So using exponentials is a pretty good way to create some pretty darn big numbers. So the most famous example of that is a Google. Now that is, that is spelled G-O-O-G-O-L, the computer search company. Uh, changed the spelling for their their name. Um, and so it's one followed by 100 zeros. Great. OK, it's a silly name, but it's it's a cool number, 10 followed by 100 zeros. That's getting to be more than the number of particles probably in the, in, in the observable universe. Don't know how many in the whole universe. Could be infinite. But uh, that's a pretty big number. Well, what if you, for example, wanted to play a game where you could assign a yes or no or a zero or a one, put a label on every one of those particles in the universe. Well, then you'd have something like two to the 10 to the 100. Or if you put a digit on every one of those particles in the, in the universe, and let's say, as a rough estimate, there are 10 to the 100 par particles in the universe, 10 to the 10 to the 100. That's the kind of numbers we're talking about. So this is putting one digit on every particle, or in other words, it would be one followed by that many, by a Google zeros. So this is one, and put in one Google zeros. That's a really, really, really big number. Um, it's a staggeringly big number, and it's uh, again, it's something you couldn't even really write down. Since 10 to the 100 is probably more than the number of particles in the universe, you couldn't actually even write this down in the standard place value notation. You have to start using exponentials. So those are already really, not rally, really, really big. But I'm actually going to talk about how those are going to be really, really puny. We're going to talk about some numbers that make even a Googleplex. So yeah, I forgot to write down. This is called a Google Googleplex. That make even a Googleplex look absolutely puny. And it's so cool. So let's think about the basic process here. The exponential notation was something that basically um, made a simple notation for this repeated process of adding a 0, or basically multiplying by 10. Okay, So exponents are just repeated multiplication of the same number by itself. So this is 10 multiplied by itself 100 times. And this is 10 multiplied by itself 10 to the 100 times at Google Times. OK, well, there's a very cool thing we can do with that. What about repeated exponentiation? There's a word for this, although I don't, I've never seen it that much, uh, tetration. 
and we'll, we can maybe say later why it's called tetration, why the tetra for Greek for four comes in. Um, but there's a, a nice notation for it, which is called the double up arrow notation. And this is due to Donald Knuth, uh, who did a lot of other, has done a lot of incredibly important work in theoretical computer science, programming, uh, fundament, foundations of mathematics, all kinds of good stuff. So here's the definition. It's that, well, let's just do it, do an example. Like uh, 10 double up arrow 3 means take 10 and exponentiate it to it by itself three times. Write it down three times. That's 10 to the 10 to the 10. Now, it's really important, I should have mentioned that here, the parentheses go like this. They're always going to be implied to be like this. If they weren't, if it was 10 to the 10, and then you just take that to the 10, that's just a silly way of writing. By laws of exponents, that's just a silly way of writing 10 to the 10 times 10. Just still a pretty big number. It's still, it's a Google. But it's not nearly as big as one followed by 10 billion zeros, which is 10 double up three. Okay, so these, this kind of way of print, doing the parentheses is never interesting. There's a, always a better way to write it, and it's not as big. And what we care about is we want big numbers. So it's always better to put the parentheses in the exponent, because that makes the exponent bigger, and that's better than making the base bigger in terms of making big numbers. Okay, so what's another one? Like 10 double up five. Oops, didn't, uh, it's not supposed to be an exponent. Double up five is 10 to the 10 to the 10 to the 10 to the 10. That's starting to be pretty big. 10 to the 10 is 10 billion. So I c maybe I'll just write that out. So at this stage here, 10 to the 10 billion, that's already a much, much, much bigger than a Google. That is one followed by 10 billion zeros. So you'd have to have a book length uh, Pay a, a, a whole book worth of one followed by a book worth of zeros to even write down this part of the number in ordinary place value notation. Then you follow, take one followed by that many zeros. Now, so it's 10 to the 10 to the big. That's already bigger than a Googleplex by quite a bit. And so that would be this guy. That's bigger, a lot bigger than a Googleplex. And then you take one followed by that many zeros, or you multiply 10 by itself that many times. Holy moly, 10 double up 5. That is getting big. But nope, actually, it's going to be puny pretty soon. But you could want to stop for a minute. I'm going to go on pretty quickly here. But you want to stop for a minute and think about, can you really get any deep, visceral sense of how big even this number is? And we're going to go so far beyond this. It's just scary. But even this is really, really, really big. So even though we're going to do big numbers, and I'm going to try to give you some intuition for them, it's really hard to have any deep intuition for anything even as big as this, and certainly not bigger. But it's still fun. Why don't we go on? Okay. So we could do 10 double up 10, for example. That's going to be pretty big. That's going to be a chain of exponentials that's 10 high. Okay. I'm not going to write it out. Um, or we could do 10 double up 100. Okay, we could do 100 double up 100, but changing this number isn't as important as changing this guy. If I make this 100, all the things in the chain are 100, it makes it bigger. But if I change this and make it bigger, it makes the chain bigger, which if you think about it for a while, that makes it a lot, lot bigger. Okay, well, what if I did, hmm, 10 double up 10, and then I put parentheses in, and I do 10 double up 10 first. Whoa, that's going to be unbelievably huge. 10 double up 10 is a lot bigger than this unbelievably huge number because it's 10 to the 10 to the 10 to the 10 to the 10 with 10 10s written right down. And then I do 10 and I double up that. What the heck is that? That is 10 to the 10 to the 10 to the 10 to the 10 dot dot dot. And how many 10s am I supposed to write down? I'm supposed to write down this many 10s. And this is already a number that's so much bigger than the number of atoms in the universe, it's not even funny. So there's no way I could even write this down, even if I allow myself to write down chains of exponentials with ordinary numbers like 10. I couldn't even write this down with the number of atoms or particles in the universe. That is pretty amazing. okay? And that is called 10 
triple up three. Very compact notation. It's just uh, triple up means repeat double up this many times. So for example, uh, five triple up uh, four would be five double up parentheses, five double up parentheses, five double up five. So the four has disappeared because the four is how many times you repeat the operation. And, it, and triple up just means repeat the double up operation this many times on this number. Okay, so how could we unpack that at all? Well, maybe a little bit. Um, let me just copy it. First, we're going to go inside out. Five double up five. We can actually write that out. Five to the five to the five to the five. Okay. Well, five to the five is not actually a huge number. Um, it's certainly it's less than 100,000. Five to that, well, it's bigger than a Google because five is pretty close to 10, and five to the five is bigger, definitely bigger than 100. But this number here is less than a Googleplex because these are it's a three-stage exponential, and they're less than five, tens and hundreds. Okay. But then I take five to that power. That's getting already bigger than a Googleplex. Then I take a chain a tower of fives in exponentials, an exponential tower of fives, that's that many long, okay, so that's getting to be this kind of order, but maybe not quite as big. But, then what do I do? I take that unbelievably huge number that's made out of an incredibly, unimaginably long tower of exponentials of fives, and then I make that tower of exponentials of fives. Because five double up this huge number means raise five to itself over and over and over again, this huge number of times. And that's just five triple up four. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Now, as an aside here, these things don't always uh, make incredibly huge numbers. For example, one triple up anything. Think about that. You're going to expand that out. It's all going to be in terms of towers of exponentials with ones. That's just going to be one. Okay. Two, uh, or like five triple up two is going to be 5 double up oh wait we don't need any parentheses it's just 5 double up ooh, d 5 double up 5 okay so that's still pretty big but it's not absolutely ridiculous so if you have a 2 here it does sort of go back down to the next stage and in fact if I had 2 double up 2 oops then that's actually not going to be big at all or 2 triple up 2 even two triple up two, that's just two double up two. Oh wait, that's just two raised to itself, and that's just four. So if this number's a one, or if both the numbers are twos, you're not actually gonna get, get a big number. But anything else, you're gonna get a pretty, pretty huge number. So a lot of my examples will have threes in them at some point, um, or fours at most, because those are the smallest numbers that you're guaranteed to give you gigantic, ginormous numbers. Okay, so one more thing before I cut this off um, and switch to another video, um, part two. Uh, why this notation like double up, etc.? Well, as far as I know, it's just because, um, you know, if you write, if you don't have superscripts, five to the five could be written as five and then an up arrow to say the next thing should be a superscript. And when Knuth was doing this, probably he was working on computers that didn't have superscripting capabilities. It's the early 70s, uh, probably. I'm not sure exactly when he did it. Um, and of course, on a calculator nowadays, uh, or even pretty recently, a lot of calculators, you still have five caret five. So you can just think of the caret as the up arrow without the, the stem. And then the double up arrow is just saying, okay, let's take that further. That idea of like, there's some sort of magical super exponent, or super superscript notation that we're trying to emulate. Okay, so we're getting pretty big. We've gotten up to numbers, the biggest number we've gotten so far is 5 triple up 4. You might be able to see the next stage this is going to in the next video.